Oh, why hello. So nice of you to join me on this uh, video hangout. I'm, I'll just put my mug down right here. Uh, trying something a little more uh, casual with some of our phone commentary. Today we're going to be talking about the wrap-up on the HTC One Mini. Now, I, I received the Mini uh, from AT&T uh, the end of August, and so I had all of September and uh, October, November, uh, now into December, to play with this, this little Wonder Mini phone from HTC. I'm sort of ready to share some of my thoughts and using this real-world usage, the, the sort of uh, you know, uh, experiences I had in picking up this little mini phone. And uh, so let's jump in. Let's get right to it. So first of all, and going back, I did produce a, a much more aggressively edited first impressions video on the HTC One Mini. You can go check that out. We also have a benchmarking video on the little dual core that's in the HTC One Mini uh, camera test and a uh, sound speaker test. So you can hear how boom sound speakers on the Mini compared to boom sound speakers on the proper HTC One and pretty much every other phone that we've played with here on Some Gadget Guy. Uh, just jumping in right there on the hardware, I have to say that in terms of the feel in the hand, in terms of the shape and the form factor, outside of the Moto X, this has still been one of my favorite phones to pick up just as a phone-like experience, the ability to easily reach every uh, side of the screen without having to do too much hand dancing while you're using the device. Uh, getting into even a, a nicely form factor device like the LG G2, there's no hope of my thumb reaching the opposite side of the screen or for any of the soft buttons down. <laughs> See, exactly because of that. <laughs> because of issues like that, the HTC One Mini has actually been a joy to use. I, I don't like going back down to phones as small as the iPhone, but this gets us a slightly more reasonable experience in, in still a nice medium-sized screen form factor. I'm going to try not to throw the lights back into <laughs> the webcam that I'm shooting this on. I'm trying to stay front lit, not letting the side lighting from my window totally uh, black out my den here. Uh, the durability on this has been pretty fantastic. And, and also in the way that HTC has had to make a few compromises on this device, the, the white plastic edging around the sides, around the top, it actually does provide, in my opinion, for a slightly nicer feel. Uh, going over the edges on an HTC One, they feel a little unfinished on some of these corners, and especially around the headphone jack. That just looks like that was completely not well thought out at all. Thankfully, the One Mini doesn't have that problem. And because we've got this plastic edge leading around the side, it really does feel like it could do a better job handling drops, falls, bumps, bruises. Thankfully, in my time using it, I was able to hold on to it better than some of our other larger screen phones. So it never did actually experience a tumble in my care. I like to baby my gadgets. I like to take care of them. You know, I, I don't like showing, you know, damage and drop tests. And thankfully, I didn't have to with the HTC One Mini. Moving on to uh, speakers. Again, if you want that premier multimedia experience, it's got to be boom sound. Boom sound is phenomenal. Now, for those of you out there listening who are fans of HTC or considering an HTC product, boom sound is not the loudest speaker set on a smartphone. So far in my testing, Samsung actually has paired their phones with louder speakers. And we're talking a couple decibels here. It's not profoundly louder when you go to, to a Samsung device, but they have been louder for alerts, ringtones, you know, just any, any sort of like, you know, calendar alarms, things like that. The difference is these speakers point in the right direction. So even though they're not as loud, even with both speakers going, this isn't going to be as loud as a Samsung device when you're using it. Sound is hitting you right in the face. And so it's going to feel louder. It's going to be a richer experience. It's going to be a nicer experience. But technically, it's not louder. And that can affect uh, things like if you keep your phone in a backpack or a purse. You, you will have a slightly better chance of catching an alert or catching a ringtone using a Samsung device than using an HTC, especially if in that pocket your speakers get covered. Um, there's, a little, there's a little less. Um, one, one of the great examples is sort of the bottom firing speaker on iPhones and Nokia devices. It gives you just a little bit more of an opportunity to say slide this into a pocket and the sound from the speaker is still not going to be blocked. On the back of the phone, on the front of the phone, there's that chance that you're going to miss alerts or miss ringtones uh, because those speakers are covered up. 
Now, when you're actually using the device, hands down, I can absolutely say you would prefer to go with boom sound. If, if, if you value audio in your movies, in your gaming experience, you know, you're streaming Netflix, or you're playing Riptide, something like that, this is going to be the premier experience for audio. There's just nothing like it. Front-facing stereo speakers should be mandatory on all of our gadgets moving forward into 2014 and beyond, especially on tablets. The fact that we've got all that bezel space on tablets and yet we still throw speakers out the sides or speakers out the back is ridiculous, especially if we figured it out on phones. So uh, I do have a nitpicky on the, uh, on, the, on the way that HTC is fused shut uh, the HTC One Mini, and, and and for this is this actually goes for all phones that are sort of locked down, fused shut, because we haven't found out found a good solution for keeping this information on the back of our device. On regular on phones where you can take off the back plate, all of this information, the uh, EMEI, the serial number, all of that stuff. Here I'll if I can make that gets put on on this obnoxious sort of sticker. There we go. And on the HTC One Mini, it's starting to peel off. So I've got like this one little corner where the sticker with all of this info is starting to peel off. On the LG G2, after a week of using it, all of that information had gotten smudged. So it wasn't even useful anyway. I kind of jammed my thumbnail under there and, and removed it. We've got to find something better than this. Having a sticker just sort of mars the, the, the back appearance. And then also, I'm not really comfortable with my phone serial number and EMEI just being sort of publicly exposed. We've got to do something else. And I don't know what the answer is, but I hope smarter people than I can figure it out. Because there's, there's a minor security problem there. And then also just for those times where you'll need that information, if you're running some kind of update or you're going to activate the device, and this sticker is worn away or is peeling off or is smudged, you're sort of left in the lurch. And that's kind of a bummer. And moving on to software, uh, Sense is still, I'm not going to be able to show you too much. I've, I've got better examples on the first impressions video that uh, I was using before. But Sense is still my favorite manufacturer skin of the year. Uh, TouchWiz definitely includes more functionality, and I think TouchWiz uh, is a funner experience, especially in the candy-colored icons and all of the, you know, like, you know, you can do, like, screen swipes over the camera, things like that. But Sense has matured. Where it used to be my least favorite, now it's my most favorite because it's matured into just a very simple and clean visual aesthetic. And especially running on slightly underpowered hardware, it's nice when that experience is fluid, is sophisticated, and it's attractive. I mean, smartphones and technology, we care about the capabilities, but we also care about how they look and feel. And I think Sense right now has that really creamy, slick, very easy to use experience. I'm trying to swipe through things and I'm not doing a very good job while also trying to use this on a camera. But but it's just very clean and it's very nuanced and, and it doesn't function like any other Android handset. So there will be a learning curve if you've used previous Android devices and then you move to a Sense device. You're always going to have that kind of culture shock dealing with the software. But I have to say my experiences on both of these phones has been pretty good. Uh, I, I do move over to Nova Launcher just because, I, and I did a full video on this, you can check it out, um, that I really do wish you could move Blink Feed. So when you're, when you're using your phone setup, Blink Feed will always be the leftmost home screen, and I really wish I could put it in the middle and have one home screen to one side of Blink Feed and one home screen to another. So what I end up doing is going to Nova and then putting a shortcut on my home screen in Nova, which will take me to Blink Feed so I can get that really pretty sort of aggregated uh, look at all of my social networking and all of my news feeds and things like that. I have another video on that, and uh, when this is done sort of rendering, I'll, I'll put a little annotation so that you can get to that there too. But support has been pretty good too. Uh, within a within two months of getting this, it received a 200 megabyte or almost like 270 270 megabyte up, update, uh, which fixed some of the stuttering issues I was having. Uh, I didn't even get a chance to tell you about some of those stuttering issues. They were fixed in a timely fashion, and it did improve some of the camera performance. Um, it's still on 4.2.2, and this is going to be one of those areas where I might have to do yet another follow-up on the One Mini, even though it hasn't proven to be a very popular device, just to see what happens when a phone like this maybe gets KitKat. We have no official word from HTC whether or not they're going to be working 
on an update to KitKat, but I really hope it's in the pipeline because KitKat really does seem like it would be a great update for phone rocking, mid-grade, slightly lower end specs. The dual core processor, the one gig of RAM, that seems like this would turn this device into a screamer, especially after what we've seen Motorola do with low powered hardware. Once you move over to KitKat, it's a totally different experience. Even on, because it's right back there, my older Nexus 7 with the Tegra 3 chipset, KitKat breathed a lot of new life into that device. And so I think it would be a shame if HTC missed out on an opportunity to bring that level of fluidity to the HTC One Mini. So all of this has been pretty good. All of this has been a very positive experience, especially for this being a mid-range device. You have to dredge it by a completely different set of criteria. I know I bring up other phones like the HTC One and the LG G2, but honestly, when you're in the market shopping a phone, if you're looking at this, you're not considering this, and vice versa. There have been a few bummers, though, and it has been frustrating dealing with the storage on the HTC One Mini coming from a slightly more power user perspective. Installing some apps. I only have one game on here. I have Riptide on here just because that's kind of my jam right now. But then all of the other services that I use, like Facebook, uh, Plume for my Twitter, Netflix, going through all those and the benchmarking apps. I still have the benchmarking apps on here. I should maybe clean those out. Once I got through my camera test, just the footage that I shot from my camera test, go check out my camera test. We'll talk about the camera in a little bit more too. And installing those apps, I went from having... 10-ish gigs of storage to just under 7. And that's not a lot of room, especially if you're someone like me who really likes using the camera on your smartphone. You will fill that up tremendously fast with photos and videos. And if you start putting multimedia devices on there, you're, you're downloading movies from Google Play, for example, you're going to rock this handset pretty quick. 16 gigabytes is now becoming sort of the minimum that we would ever want to see on a mid-range or high-end device if we don't have access to a memory card slot. When we have access to a memory card slot, this is, this is far less precious. I can throw a 32 gig in there and just let my camera dump everything on there and then just use the, the 10 to 12 gigs of, of storage after formatting purely for apps. And that setup works really well. And setup works tremendously well for those for those devices that use it. I'm okay, even with some of the phablets out there that use less storage built into the device, as long as I've got the ability to upgrade it on my own. So I don't want to get too hung up harping on the storage. I mean, especially if you're watching this video, you're probably a little more tech savvy, tech savvy than the average bear. So I, I'm sure you're you're well aware of some of those concerns that that come from having limited storage. One of the things that was a shock about picking up the HTC One Mini, unfortunately, and, and this one is a slightly bigger nail in the coffin for me as a power user, was the lack of NFC. There is no NFC on the HTC One Mini. Now, for the audience that this phone is targeted at, and the fact that it, it, it's, it's obviously got sort of an iPhone-like experience in its sights, it's a mid-range, consumer-driven device. This is not a high-end power user or gamer device, I still find the lack of NFC just a touch troubling. We're moving into an ecosystem where we might start doing more of our mobile banking through NFC once ISIS and Google Wallet become just a little bit more widespread. We're seeing more and more accessories start supporting NFC. I just posted a very long review of the Motorola, I mean not the Motorola, the Nokia Purity Pro headphones which have tap and pair functionality. It's these uh, super bright electric neon yellow head headphones here, and I don't think I can, yeah, see, yeah, my lights are blowing that out, but there's a little NFC chip built into the ear cup on the Purities. On most other phones, the Galaxy S4, the LG G2, the HTC One proper, you tap them together, you hit a button, and you're off listening to music. This came as a shock when I was doing the speaker test for the Nokia Play 360, where I've been using the One Mini for some of the other tests, like for the ja uh, the Jam Box from Jawbone and the Jam Classic from HMDX, and it I didn't even question it. I, I instantly picked up the phone, tapped it to the top of the speaker, and nothing happened. Just no go. And I thought maybe, oh man, did I break my speaker? Is there something wrong with the phone? I'm digging through all of the menus and the settings. And of course, that's how I sort of found out 
that there was no NFC. I just didn't do my homework on what was built into the phone reading the spec sheet before I went in there. I glanced at it, and you just sort of take it for granted that phones today will have that kind of connectivity. This this isn't entirely HTC's fault. I mean, I really wish Google would make a radio like NFC more of a requirement for companies that are building out Android handsets moving into the future. That's not the case. That means as a cost-saving measure, and they're sort of taking a targeted look at their audience, that they they made a compromise there, and unfortunately it's one that I, I disagree with. I really wish that they included it. So uh, the other, the other uh, bummer that I, I, I wasn't prepared for when I did my first impressions. Actually, I've got two more bummers. One of the other bummers that I wasn't prepared for during my first impressions was the battery life. Uh, because this is rocking a slightly older dual-core chipset, and we're using some slightly more power-intensive apps and services, when I first started using it, it seemed like it would be an okay, sort of make-it-to-dinner time kind of phone. The problem with slightly underpowered hardware is the more powerful apl applications that you throw at it, the harder that processor has to work, and the sooner you're going to deplete your battery. It's just going to run hotter. I mean, those of you who are familiar with you know, putting your own desktops and workstations together, you kind of understand you know, when, when you run lower power hardware harder, it, it's not very power efficient. It's not a pervasive problem on the HTC One, but again, it just reiterates the number or the series of compromises that HTC has made in targeting a specific customer demographic. And yet again, it just reinforces that if you're someone who likes to game a lot on your phone or if you're someone who's watching tons of streaming video on your mobile devices, that you're probably not considering a device like the HTC One Mini anyway, but when you really stress it, it doesn't perform quite as well as some of our other newer devices which have become battery wonderkins. Like the Moto X has incredible battery life considering how similar the guts are to the HTC One Mini. You just don't have the same experience on the One Mini. And you don't really want to use things like the battery saver on the One Mini. One, I just don't like how HTC's application for battery saver turns off things like vibrating alerts. Because the speakers aren't as loud, I like this thing vibrating in my pocket. <laughs> and that's, she totally just said that. Um, I like this thing vibrating in my pocket just to make sure that I'll catch an alert or a calendar alarm or you know a ringtone. You know, if you're in a busy environment, sometimes you won't hear this phone ring. So you want to be able to, to feel it. You want to be able to take it out of your pocket and you want to notice it. Uh, also, when this thing ramps down the CPU, you do start getting into some stuttering issues. This already has some problems with multitasking. In day-to-day -day usage, you've got your Gmail up and you're moving back and forth between like Gmail and Facebook, maybe Google Maps. Normal usage like that, you're going to be doing just fine. But it will manifest itself when you do things like update an app. So the phone is downloading information, it's reinstalling an application. If you go away from that and try and do something else, you'll see some pretty severe stuttering. It's not a very smooth experience. The phone is 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 working really hard. So you don't want to blame it. You, you understand what this phone is. So when you employ something like Battery Saver and it scales back the CPU, you're already working at a deficit. The hardware is already just a little bit older. It's just a little bit lower powered. Throwing Battery Saver on top of it really does slow down the whole experience. All of that fluidity that I was showing you, you know, going through and swiping and going through your Blink Feed stuff and pulling up your, your apps, all of this is nice and slick and smooth when you throw a battery saver on that and apps are running in the background. All of this just has a slightly more stuttery or jaggy experience, and that's kind of a bummer. So lastly, I'm just going to kind of reshift here. I'm going to take a quick drink of water too. Lastly, and, and this is where maybe I'm the most bummed out with the HTC One Mini, is the camera. So we have ultra pixels on this camera. And it's a very similar move to what Apple did with the iPhone 5S. They, you know, they put a larger Im image sensor on board and larger pixels which should soak up more light. HTC even went so far as on all of their devices to reduce the resolution of the camera sensors on these phones so they could include larger ultra pixels, larger photo sites so that low light capability will improve. That is true. You do get better low light sensitivity. But unfortunately, I think we're now starting to see 
that larger photo sites on backside illuminated sensors, while a benefit, that's not as profound a benefit as including optical image stabilization. On phones like Nokia's, I mean, it's not a fair comparison to throw up the 1020, but if I had it handy, even the 920, the 925, because there's a, an element in the lens which compensates for your hand movement, that is a, in, in terms of the single upgrades between these two phones, that is a much better improvement to your photo and video quality than just having the larger photo sites. So I would also recommend going out and checking my uh, HTC One Mini cameras, uh, camera review if you were considering picking one of these up because the performance on this is mid-pack at best. I find it to be just kind of subpar especially considering how how much I liked the camera on the proper HTC One. This still has one of my favorite all-round cameras on any Android device, even compared to the Galaxy Note 3 and the LG G2, even though it's the lower resolution image sensor, I think you're apt to get better results out of this than just about any other Android handset on the market today still. Uh, unfortunately, the same cannot be said of the camera on the HTC One Mini. In good light, Sure, any camera can perform well, but in indoor lighting, low light, and nighttime photography, especially in high dynamic range situations where you've got lights in a dark environment, this thing just doesn't quite hold up to the promise of what ultra pixels were supposed to deliver. So that's, that's maybe the biggest buyer beware right there. If you value the camera on your phone, this might not be one to consider. And that kind of hurts me to say because the rest of the experience is pretty good considering who this phone is targeted at. So that brings me to the wrap-up. Who is this phone targeted at? It's not targeted at premier smartphone experiences. It's not targeted at gamers. It's not targeted at people who want that, that, that the highest end camera experience. But I still do think that there is an audience for this phone. Uh, people who want to get back to a more phone-like shape. People who want a, a device which ergonomically fits better in the hand. People who don't need high-end horsepower, high-end specs to play games, who just need to be able to check their Gmail or be able to look up something on Google Maps, but still want a good screen to do it on. You know, you're not taking too many compromises putting 720p on a 4.3-inch display. You know, it's really hard to see a clarity difference between 720p on this side on this size screen and 1080p on a 4.7-inch display. I mean, the devices really aren't that dissimilar in size. And I know this is called the Mini, but it's not really that much smaller. Thankfully, the screen resolution doesn't make that much of a hit on the experience of using the phone. Text is still crisp. Fine detail in photos and video, still crisp. It's been a very pleasurable experience. It's just hung up by a couple nitpicky... Well, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to say they're nitpicky. It's hung up by a couple gimmies that for the general smartphone consuming market out there makes this a slightly more difficult phone to recommend. There is still an audience for it. You might still be an audience. You still might be someone who this phone will work well for you, but you really want to know it's got the features that you want and you care about. And things like the camera, things like the battery life, kind of an issue, and things like NFC. If you want NFC on your phone, you have to look somewhere else. And now in this market, though, this phone doesn't exist in a vacuum. And so when you're shopping another device or you're shopping something which you know is, is similar to this, I would maybe still take a look at the Moto X. The Moto X, if you, if you look at my first impressions review of the Moto X, the Moto X form factor is actually just a touch smaller than the HTC One Mini, even though it includes a 4.7-inch 720p display. I mean, it's, it's remarkable just how much competition we've seen for this, and especially at this time of year. I'm shooting this around the holidays. Happy holidays, by the way. You might also be able to score a really good deal on these sort of Premier phones. Like, I think you can pick up, if you go on Amazon right now, I think you can pick up the HTC One proper for around 50 bucks. I know a couple of the carriers were running deals on the LG G2 for $0 down on a two-year contract. And, and I know this one on, on Amazon right now, if you shop it on a contract, you can pick it up for a penny. 
So, you know, if it's the difference between $50 for a high-end Premier phone on contract and a penny for this on contract, you still have to ask yourself some very difficult questions about how you're going to use your phone, what you want your phone for, and where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. There's a big truck driving by my window right now. I mean, that's really the, the one thing that I can't completely answer for you guys is what it is that you want and what compromises you're willing to live with should be the deciding factors in how you make a purchasing decision. I can tell you all about my experiences, but you're the ones that are still going to be out there spending money on your devices. So that's where I'm at with the HTC One Mini. I am going to hold on to it for just a little while longer, and I'll try and do another a recap video for those of you who are curious about how this might perform. I'm really hoping HTC One, uh, I'm really hoping that HTC provides us with an update for KitKat, and I think that will actually make this a, a nicer phone experience on top of the the mostly positive experiences that I've had with this phone outside of the camera and NFC. So as always folks, I really have been appreciating all of the chatter, all of the comments on my videos. You guys have been leaving questions and getting into debates with me and that's really fun. I've been doing more videos that uh, we'll be talking about, uh, you know, answering viewer questions. We're going to be doing our series of experts videos. The next one's on Android. All things Android, we're going to be on hand to answer your questions live on the air and uh, you'll be able to catch it here on YouTube after we're all done with it. Uh, so if uh, if I don't see questions and comments on the HTC One Mini, I think I'll understand uh, where the market's gone beyond, but I still thought it was an important enough phone to talk about, so I appreciate you taking the time to watch some of this video, and I'll be coming out with a few other really exciting video uh, first impressions and gadget reviews coming in the next several days. So on that note, I will catch you all on the next review.